next. All right, ladies, are you seeing the syllabus on your yes, screen? Yes, sir. Good. All right, so I just want us to see where we are at now for us to have, a, have an idea of the syllabus, where we are, the things. There are three modules. We know there are module one, module two, and module three. Module one and three, sorry, module one is, a, is very lengthy. And so what we have done thus far is that under module one, the first topic is location and definitions of the Caribbean region and its diaspora. So far, what we have done is A, so we have done geographic 1A, geographic location. So we would have done things like names of countries, sub-regions, the Greater Antilles, Less Antilles, Bahamas, mainland territories, the different seas, we would have done that. We would have done 1A, 1B. We would have also looked at the various ways in which the Caribbean is defined, the geographical, geological, historical, political, and the diasporic. So we would have covered 1A and 1B thus far. Now, we are at 2A. That's where we are. So the migratory movement and settlements of patterns of the Caribbean settlement by different groups, which are the different groups that we would have looked at thus far in terms of migration into the region. What are the different groups? Indigenous people, the African Yes. Yes. We look at the indigenous people and the Africans. Which other group we would have looked at? The Europeans. The Europeans. So give me in chronological order. The first one we would have looked at was? The indigenous people. Then? The Europeans. And then, then this? The Africans. Very good. So next, this week, what we're going to do is that we're going to, maybe on Friday, not Friday, on for Thursday's class, we're going to look at the indentured work. Right, the, those who came as contract laborers, for example, the Indians and the Chinese, we're going to look at their contribution. In addition, for tomorrow's class, what we're going to do for tomorrow's class, we're going to put a little bit more into the African contribution by looking at the their contribution in terms of their religious contribution. I think I need to go deeper into that, right? And then next week, what we're going to do is that we're going to look at 2B next week, where we're going to look at migratory movement within and outside the Caribbean. Oh, we migrate all over the place. Oh, we move to places like Santo Domingo, which is in the Caribbean, Panama, London, the US. We're going to look. So we, Basically, going back to the diaspora definition, but we're going to go in greater detail for 2B. After that now, we're, which is next week also, next week I want to touch on the systems of production, such as slash and burn, encomienda, slavery, indentureship, the plantation system. So that is, these are the two topics we're going to look at next week in the syllabus. 2B and 2C. Hopefully, ladies, by the end of the term, I want to reach. Oh, I reach this one. By the end of the term, which is usually the case, 
we usually finish our syllabus, not finish, but we usually finish by November, the end of November, we usually finish at characteristics of society and culture. So this is where we usually finish three. When we return, we usually do four, which is cultural diversity, social stratification and stuff. If time permits us, then we will continue to look right up to identity and social formation of the Caribbean, which is, I believe it's one of my favorite, one of my favorite topics. Then next term, we're going to start with geographical phenomena. That's if time permits us. Now what I want to tell you is that for in the class, we are doing module one. In the common hour, we are doing module three. So, for module three, where am I? Good. For module three, this morning in the common hour, for module three, this is module three that we're doing in the common hour. The first one that we would have looked at this morning is explain the nature and the purpose of research. So that is just the first thing that we would have done. What is research? Why we do research, all right? What are the purpose? Next week, we're going to look at research problems, the research questions, literature review, all of these different stuff. That is all that we are going to cover for module three. So module three, common hour, module one and two, we are doing module one and two in classes. Next term, we are going to start module two in class because we, by next term, we should finish module three. At the end of this term, we should finish module three. So you understand where we are going, all right? In terms of the syllabus. So for today's class, uh, and the next thing, ladies, there are three pieces of graded work that's going towards your final grade. Are you seeing my screen now, writing for Caribbean studies? Are you seeing my screen, ladies? No, sir, we still see the syllabus. Just a syllabus, all right, so I need to, where it is. You are seeing it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. So this is it now, ladies. What? All right, so this is what we're doing right now, okay? So there are three assessments that we are supposed to do at this term. Usually it is five, but because of COVID, are five graded, you usually have five graded work that goes towards your, your grade for your report, but for this year, we're just doing three. The first is that you're going to do an essay, the second, a multiple choice test, and the third, a group presentation. So those are the three work that you're doing that is going towards your grade, all right? for this term. And so before I give you a graded essay, what I want you to do is to know how to write an essay for Caribbean studies. Not only for Caribbean studies, because the same way I'm teaching you to write your essays is the same way you are supposed to write your essays for, we call it, for other subjects. Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. Paris says she's in the waiting room. Thanks. Okay, so, so ladies, you got this for your homework. The Amerindians contributed more to modern Caribbean culture. The use of example developed one paragraph to discuss the extent to which you agree with this 
Amen. Now, ladies, this is not a right and wrong way of doing it. I just want to hear your feedback so we can improve how we write. All right? Nothing. So somebody please share two students. I want two students to share their, their paragraph. Any two students. Any two students? Nobody has done the work? Yes, sir. But, sir, um, the, the statement was a little confusing because it said contributed more. So I don't know if I was supposed to compare something or just talk about how they contributed. You just tell me what you, what you wrote. Okay, sir. So my thing that I, I wrote, it stated that the Amerindians contributed more to the modern Caribbean culture. I completely agree with this declaration. The Amerindians have left a heritage that is a part of many Caribbean and non-Caribbean countries. The Amerindians were the original inhabitants of the West Indies. The two main tribes in the Caribbean were the Tainos, who settled mainly in the Greater Antilles, and the Kalinago, who settled mainly in the Lesser Antilles. Both these tribes have, sig have contributed significantly to the Caribbean, demo to the Caribbean demographically, they impacted food eating in the Caribbean countries as well as the language. In countries like Dominica and Trinidad, animals named and eaten by Amerindians still exist. The agutu, which is a rat, the manaku, and the tolulu, which is a crab, and iguana are some of the animals that still have their Amerindian names. There are many words that are derived from Amerindian words, such as barbecue, hammock, tobacco, etc. Even the names of countries are derived from Amerindian words, such as Jamaica, Cayman, Haiti, and Cuba. The Amerindians were excellent farmers and cooks. They left behind many cooking techniques and crops. They cultivated cassava, sweet potato, corn, pineapple, etc. All these foods, all these are foods that make up the diet of many Caribbean people. The Amerindians left cooking techniques like jerk and barbecue, which are cooking styles enjoyed by many Caribbeans and foreigners. The jerk technique is also very popular in Jamaica and is one of the main things the country is known for. They also taught us how to remove the poison from cassava roots to make it edible. These are only a few contributions made by the Amerindians. And then Based on this discussion, it is clear that the Amerindians have contributed a lot to not only the Caribbean, but to other foreign countries like Ireland, who uses the potato in one of their most famous dishes, the shepherd pie. And that's what I wrote. Excellent. Excellent. But they give me more than a paragraph, man. Sir, I just wrote. All right. That, that was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, anyone else? Very good. Seems like you write the entire essay, but that is good. Very good. Anyone else, ladies? You're still waiting. If you want me to finish your class and you go and do it and then we we'll come back another time, let me know. I need another student to share what they actually wrote. Anyone else?
Green, Abigail Green. Anya McDonald. Sinclair. Duncan. Yes, so sir. No, no one did the work. Sir, I did it. You can read for me, please. The Amerindians contributed more to the modern Caribbean culture. The Amerindians contributed to the way we speak, eat, and our recre recreational activities. Mm -hmm. Some of the words like tobacco and hurricane is used all over the Caribbean. Popular dishes like jerk and bami is also eaten a lot. Smoking tobacco and going rafting on the Rio Grande are popular among Caribbean people. All right, good, excellent. All right, very good, very good. Anybody disagree with the statement? Anyone disagree with the statement? No, sir. Because there are different ways in which we can approach a person. You can agree or you can disagree with the statement. All right? Now, ladies, when you're writing for your essays, the first thing you need to know, ladies, when you're doing your essays, is that you need an introduction, you need your points, and you need your conclusion. Your points must be developed properly. And for each of your points, ladies, you need to peel your points. For the 20 marks essays, you need four points. And for the 30 mark essays, you need five to six points. And those five to six points is excluding your your introduction and your conclusion as paragraph right so when we talk about peel peel actually means when you're peeling each of your paragraph peel actually mean your point evidence or evidence or examples explanation and link that is how we peel our we peel our paragraphs, all right? Now, both of the responses thus far are good responses. I think the last student, both of them, they are good responses. But however, if you should get this question for a 20 marks in, CX, in CXC, you need to have enough information to write. All right, so the Amerindian contributed more to Caribbean, more to the modern Caribbean culture. This is a question from a from a past paper. With the use of examples, discuss the extent to which you agree with this statement. I just say develop one paragraph to discuss the extent to which you agree. But the question would have gone ahead and say to discuss the extent to which you agree with the statement. Now, the mere fact that the statement is open, Amerindians would have it shows that you can either agree with it or you can disagree with it because it said discuss the extent to which you agree. And so that means you can find evidence to support agreeing and and evidence to support disagreeing. My previous class before that students, one of the students would have disagreed. So for example, her name, I believe is Deidre Jackson. She would have disagreed. Another student would have agreed to the statement, all right? And so far from the two responses in this class, both of you would have agreed. Now, how do we peel? 
I go into the exam, I need to peel this a paragraph. So what I'm going to do is that the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say the first point I need to develop is about Christine. And I believe one of the students would have just done that. Who was the last student who just spoke? I didn't see the name. The last student who read theirs? There was Duncan. Duncan. All right, Duncan. My apology. So, Duncan, you would have yes, developed sir. quite and you would have developed well the cuisine and also parts of the recreational, just the same as Gilbert. So, when you are developing, you need to develop your points like this. You need to State your point, give the evidence or examples, give your explanation, and link, link your point back to your question. So the question said, Amerindians contributed more to modern Caribbean culture. And so we continue. My point I'm talking about, so the first thing I want to talk about is the cuisine. That's the Amerindian contribute is significant to the Caribbean cuisine. All right, so that is my point. If you want to define the word cuisine or to give us an example of what we mean by cuisine, then you can, you can do that. However, I need to give evidence of the, the cuisine. For example, for example, the, the Popular dishes, fruits, and ground provisions. So these are examples. The next one is the explanation. The explain. So this should be my bad. Their popular dishes, fruits, and ground provision. Explanation. So you're explaining now. The national dish of Ghana is pepper pot. This was a favorite of the indigenous people. So you're ex giving example of popular dishes. Other popular dishes include jerk, barbecue, and the use of iguana, crab, maniku, and for protein. All of this is what Duncan would have mentioned. Pineapples, mammy apples, and plums were fruits used by the Tainos and the Kalinados. In Jamaica, the popularity of pineapple is reflected on the coat of arms. Corn, cassava, and sweet potato are a popular indigenous start, still used today in the Caribbean. Link. The evidence is clear that the, the evidence is clear that Amerindian's cuisine is still popular in the modern Caribbean. Okay, so this is it. Your point, let us show you how you do it now. So this now, ladies, would be, this, this is how, when you write your paragraph, how it should look, something similar to this. I'm not saying because some students have their different styles, but when you are doing your different styles, ladies, ensure that certain, your point is there, especially at the beginning of the paragraph, your, egg, 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 your evidence or your examples, the, your, you explain your evidence and also or explain your point and ensure that you link it back to the topic. Okay, so let us here. All right, so this now, ladies, is our paragraph that we are working with. All right, there's one more correction I need to make some. 
good. All right, so I'm going to ask someone to read from it, please. Sir, read, read where? Read the paragraph, this paragraph. Okay. The Amerindians contributed significantly to Caribbean cuisine. For example, their popular dishes, fruits, and ground provisions. The national dish of Guyana is pepper pot. This was a favorite of the indigenous peoples. Other popular dishes include jerk, barbecue, and the use of iguana, crab, manico for protein. Pineapples, the mammy apples and plums were fruits used by the Tainos and Kalinagos. In Jamaica, the popularity of the pineapple is reflected on the coat of arms. Corn, cassava, and sweet potato are popular indigenous starch still used today in the Caribbean. The evidence is clear that the Amerindian's cuisine is still popular in the modern Caribbean. Very good. So, ladies, do you realize that for this section here, in the first one, Thank you, Rose. The first one is the point. Then I give my examples. Then I explain the explanation and then I link. So that is how you peel. So for each of your point, you need to peel. Now, when you are doing your essay, you have your introduction, point, peel. Second point, peel. Third point, peel. Quote point, peel, then your conclusion. Now, your next thing that I want to, sh to show you, the next thing I want to show you is the introduction. How do we go about writing our introduction? When you are doing your introduction, there are three main things you need in your introduction. You need to introduce the question, so that is one. You introduce a question. The next point is your thesis statement or what we, you present your position on the issue, whether you agree or you disagree, what you intend to do. The next point is that your points that you're going to develop in your paragraph or in your body of your essay, you need to mention your points in your essays, in your introduction, sorry. So for example, this is the question. If I go into the exam, I see this question. The Amerindians contributed more to modern Caribbean culture. With the use of examples, discuss the extent to which you agree with this statement. So I start by introducing the question. So I need to introduce this question that was asked. So this is my introduction of the question. This essay seeks to discuss the statement that the Amerindians contributed more to the modern Caribbean culture, just like what Gilbert would have done. So she did a very good job at her in introducing. The next thing, ladies, when you are doing your introduction, the, there are certain key terms or key words in your introduction that you are going to want to define. Okay? Sometimes some, you don't have to define all your key terms in your introduction. You can define your key terms in the body. So, for example, the Amerindians. So I want to define, I want to tell the examiner who were the Amerindians because I need one mark for them to know that I have knowledge of who the Amerindians were. So I said the Amerindians were the first inhabitants, inhabitants within the Caribbean. They arrived within the Caribbean for, from the Oriental area. Amerindians groups include the Tainos, the Kalinagos, and the Mayas. So we know for sure, once the examiner reads this, they know for sure that you know what you intend to do. Then you intend to discuss the statement that was asked, and you just inform to the examiner who were the Amerindians. So when I'm talking about the Amerindians, you know that I'm talking about the Tainos, the Kalinagos and the Mayas. Or because some students, you know, when they talk about Amerindians, you know, some students end up talking about Africans, this, that, whatever. We know who the Amerindians were. 
right? Or another um, major mistake is that you're talking about the Amerindians and then you're talking about the East Indians that came after 1838, all right? So you introduce, so that is the first thing when you're doing your introduction. You get a mark for introducing the question. So you introduce the question, after that you give your definition. Next, what is my position on the topic? If my position is, it will be argued that the indigenous peoples have contributed significantly to our Caribbean culture. That is my position. Another student position could be because all the question is phrased, it shows that you can agree or disagree. I could argue that it will be argued that the in the, the Africans and the Europeans contributed more than the Amerindians. Good? So that is your position. But well, my position that I've taken, and I've taken the easier way out, especially when you have four essays to write, always you, you just need to finish the four essays on time. So my first thing that I'm going to do is that I say, all right, it is easier to agree with this statement because I have the evidence to support it, all right? So the next thing, in this essay, we will look at their, their demographic, linguistic cuisine, and recreational legacies within the modern Caribbean. What am I talking about here? What I intend to discuss, my main ideas that I intend to discuss in the essay. So one paragraph, I'm going to look at their demographic, a next paragraph, I'm going to look at their linguistic. A next paragraph, I'm going to look at the cuisine. A next paragraph, I'm going to look at their recreational legacies. In other words, when I'm discussing within the body of my essay, I am not going to mix linguistics with demographic or cuisine with recreational activities or legacies. What I'm doing is that for each of my paragraphs, I'm showing the examiner one demographic peel. Second paragraph, linguistic peel. Third paragraph, cuisine peel. Fourth paragraph, recreational legacies peel. So in other words, where am I? So one, you have the introduction. In your introduction, you mention your main point. So my first point is demographic. I feel that, so I did do point, examples, explanation, link. Second point. My second point is demographic. What is the next one after demographic? Linguistics. So after demographic, linguistic point two. So point, explain, sorry, examples, explain, link. Third point, cuisine. Point, example, explain, link. Fourth point, recreational activities. Point, ex examples, explain link so that is for each of my point that is what i'm like i'm going to do point peel point peel point peel point peel so if you have up to six points you're going to peel each of these points think of it an essay like an orange like it's an orange and you are peeling an orange okay so you peel for each of this the next thing ladies what i want you to do is the conclusion another part of your essay is your conclusion so you when you're concluding always restate your thesis statement your position on the issue and then you summarize your main point that is how you do it for your conclusion now what i've seen some students have done this is not a perfect example is that some students mix up every single point so they talk about demographic they talk about this they talk about that in the same paragraph one big paragraph and 
when they get when they mark it or when they go to CXC and they come back with a grade four or five, they wonder why this happened. Why? Because you did not develop your points properly. And CXC is very big when it comes to developing your points. Now, now that you know how to any question I should I shouldn't even ask you. Any question, ladies? Any question? No, sir. Good. All right. So since we know now how to do our paragraph, our introduction, and how to peel our paragraph, I'm going to ask you right now to peel a point from this essay. So one, we talk about cuisine. We don't deal with cuisine already. That's finished. I'm going to ask you to develop either recreational activity, linguistics, or demography. Three, five minutes, please. When you are through, just raise your hand. You are developing those points right now. And then I'm going, I want you to share your response. So five minutes, please peel those for me. If just choose one and you're going to peel one. So add a demographic, add a recreational activity or demographic recreational activity or linguistic. You peel it. <laughs> 